What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Aiden here, back again by demand. I made my Q&A video on Friday and everybody wanted me to continue answering questions because it is hard to get through a lot of questions because most of them are pretty detailed. So I figured, you know what, let's make another video of, you know, more questions. Why the hell not, right? I'm just going to keep scrolling through them. I got over 180 questions. So let's just keep doing this. So. How come your scars are so tiny and skin colored? My scars are so tiny and skin colored because you can go back in these videos. I legitimately did not lift a damn thing for six weeks and then I did not start training until I was a solid two months, so eight weeks, and even then it was barely training. Like. I legit, um, I, I did not drive for two weeks, and then the third week I didn't drive because I had my boss, I was very lucky, my boss came and picked me up. So literally guys, like, I didn't reach to get the glass, I didn't um, reach over the table to get the salt, um, I didn't go in the sun, like I used to, we lived in Florida at the time, and I used to actually still wear a loose ace bandage underneath my undershirt, underneath my t-shirt, just because, and I did that for about, so I got my surgery in July, so I did that to like, for a couple months, at least three or four months, and then I kind of stopped doing that. What should someone tran trans do if they cannot take tea or get surgery? You can still, you know, you can still, if, if you're looking to change your physical body, you can start hitting the gym. That'll definitely give you some effects that tea will give you. It'll boost your natural testosterone. Also, um, if you can't get surgery, you can start binding, which um, gc to b has awesome binders. You can check them out. Links below in the description box. You can check them out to get, uh, you know, if you can't get surgery. What's it like being on tea? And what check exercises are good for reducing fat as much as possible? What is being on tea like? Man, that's a heavy loaded question. Uh, being on tea is, it's a, it's a life change, that's for sure. <laughs> what chest exercises are good for reducing fat? So just so you guys know, you cannot target fat. You cannot target fat. You know what, I'm gonna make a video about this specifically. Catch, catch it, I'll make that video. Were you never sad or concerned about losing nipple sensation? Yeah, I was totally sad and totally concerned about losing nipple sensation, but I was way more sad about not being male and not, um, you know, I, I felt more connected to the other sensations of my body than I did to the nipple sensation purely because they were attached to breasts. I think now if I had nipple sensation, I would see it differently because they're not attached to such a female identifying characteristic like breasts. How tall are you? I am five foot, five inches, and five foot, five and a half inches on really good days. <laughs> hey, just wondering if you have any advice for a friend on how to deal with people still mixing up pronouns. It's just about being compassionate. If the person, okay, there's two in, em, emphasis, wow. Woo, there's two occasions. One time they don't give a fuck and they're trying to be mean. Then you could just write them off as a friend because they're not your friend. Number two, if they are your friend, you can have compassion and say, listen, I understand that you're trying but I need you to try just a little bit harder. You know, every time they she you and it's supposed to be he, be like, he. Every time they Jessica you and it's supposed to be Jacob, say, it's Jessica. You know, and you don't have to say it aggressively, but say it, reiterate it. Let them know that like, listen, you can't keep sheing me. I'm not gonna take it. Like, I'm try. you know, you, you try to be as nice as you possibly can in saying it, but like, you know, eventually you'll have to have a sit down conversation with them and be like, listen, it, I can't have you shame me. It's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. Dating advice. I have no problem telling people I'm trans, but they all have these preconceptions and ex expectations of me. It's a mind feel. Yeah, that's really hard. Um, once you tell someone you're transgender, even if they accept it, like they have a lot of preconceptions about you, and the only thing we can do to change this is to just try to sh keep sharing our transgender stories. Keep sharing our individual transgender stories. When it comes to meeting people, dating, love, sex, life, how do you deal with telling people about yourself, your surgery, your body changes? Are you comfortable when it comes to intimacy or is it nerve wracking? I hope not because I think you're beautiful in every possible way. Oh, that's sweet. Um, man, how do it, it comes to meeting people? How do you deal with telling people about yourself? 
I used to feel really weird and awkward, and I used to say, oh, I don't play softball, I played baseball, and I used to say, you know, I, you know, like, I changed all my female sports into male sports, and, and it just, it didn't feel right to me, you know, I really tried to be stealth, actually, you know, the first year or two of my transition, well, first year of my transition, I really wanted to be stealth, and not, just for, not because, like, I didn't identify as transgender, or I wasn't proud of it, it was just, like, I was freaking scared. It was 2010. Nobody knew what the hell transgender was. And here I was, this little 22-year-old thing, you know what I mean? Like, trying to, like, question the whole freaking world. It was scary. So, um, how do I deal with it now? Now I just, I say it with confidence. If you say stuff with confidence, people treat you a lot differently. It's, it's really amazing. You could literally say, like, oh, yeah, check out my Ford Focus. It's super cool, right? Right? And people be like, oh, yeah, it's cool. Or you can say, like, yeah, you know, I got a Ford Focus. You know, it's something special, but it's all right. And then people be like, yeah, you know, it's something special. It's like you're giving them permission, you know, by the way you say it. So be confident. Pizza or burgers? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I know who this is. Uh, I'm going to say pizza. I'm going to say pizza. Do you have any advice for trans men trying to get fit if they're pre-T? Kind of what I just said earlier. You could just start hitting the gym. If you start hitting the gym and you have consistency, you will be good. How do you get motivated and stay motivated with getting up to go to the gym every day? I watch a ton of YouTube videos. I think I answered this in the last one. Actually, I think I literally did answer that. My bad. First off, I want to say you're an amazing person for helping people. Thank you. As for my questions, have you started your story of transformation from start to now? Have you shared your story of transformation from start to now? Yes, you can go back in my YouTube videos, guys. You can go all the way, all the way back to when I was pre-T. How did you deal with public toilets pre-T? How do I deal with public toilets non-pre-T? Oh my goodness, they suck either way. How did I deal with them? Honestly, I didn't use the male restroom unless it was a single occupancy restroom until I was on hormones. And that was just for f pure fright. And I did Starbucks. So a lot of people are like, oh, you like Starbucks so much, blah, blah, blah. I freaking love Starbucks coffee, first of all. Personal preference. And I love Starbucks because they were the first place I ever did my name. I used my name to get my coffee. Like Aiden, I used that. And um, the first time I ever used the bathroom was at a Starbucks. To my memory, at least. I might be able to go back in the videos and find out. But to my memory, it was a Starbucks single stall. All right, last question. What causes the variation in placement and quality of nipples for FTM? Is tattooing a more aesthetically pleasing choice for some guys? Yeah, you know what, this depends. The variation of nipple placement and quality, it's all gonna depend on the surgeon. Different surgeons feel that nipple placement is in different places. I went to Dr. Garrett Money. He chooses, he chooses um, you know, between the certain, certain like rib K, ribs versus the, you know, the the difference between your armpit to the middle of your chest and then he, he places it all there. And I've got to say, I really, I love his placement. I think his nipple placement is one of the best nipple placements out there, not discrediting anyone. Uh, and I am biased because I went to him, so I am biased. Is tattooing more aesthetically pleasing? Some guys I do know have gotten tattoos, and they were like, I could really give two fucks about nipples, so they just didn't have them, and then they got them tattooed on, so that's all a personal preference. All right, so I know it's the end of the video, but I did say I would be making the announcement on Monday, and I know that it is Monday, even though you might be viewing this on Tuesday. It is Monday. And the winner is I flipped and scribbled and scrabbled and went up and down and closed my eyes. And listen, I tried to use the thing that you guys suggested. Like, oh, they have this like raffle donation, uh, raffle picker. But it didn't work because you have to like, I still have to go through and write everyone's name down. So it's just as time consuming. So I like this where I load all the comments and I go like this and I close my eyes and then I go and I pick one. Okay, so, and the winner is um, Snow Black. Boom. You are the winner. And then a bunch of high fives, smiley faces, and hearts. Woohoo! All right, there we go. Winner has been announced. Snow Black 44, you are the official winner. Congratulations. I will hook you up. All right, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. It's going to be an October pumpkin extravaganza. I'll catch you on Wednesday, guys. Peace.